Hello, hello, come on in. Welcome to this scope this evening. This is going to be quick. I told you guys, hey, Christina. Um, I told you guys that I was going to, hey, Funke. I told you guys that I was going to come in and we were going to go back over who are you. Uh, Z5 Eber, welcome. Hey, hey, I think I finally discovered your website. I didn't realize that you had a website. So uh, I'm going to be looking into uh, looking at it, Christina. Yeah, thanks for inviting your followers, Funke. Okay, bless you. So I wanted to go over, just really talk about two things really quick. Uh, we were talking about who you are. Will's wife, 96, welcome. 68, Miha, welcome. Um, about um, who you, who are you? And I said yesterday, one of the things that happened with the man at, and the uh, tombs uh, is that of course, we know he went. Let me just share as well. He went and um, Jesus comes on the scene. And when Jesus shows up, one of the things, hello, how are you? Good to have you. When Jesus shows up, um, he literally begins to worship him according to King James. And I think I got that right. According to King James, he really begins to uh, wizard 343. Wow. Okay, I'm getting some interesting names here. Um, so the guy, of course, as you know, the story goes, he got delivered from all of the demons and so forth. Right. Thank you so much, uh, Rambling, Rambalingi, for sharing on Twitter. So uh, one of the things that happened is that uh, in the CEO authority, hey, where have you been? I have not seen you in some time. It's so good to see you. Um, and so uh, the guy gets delivered and so forth. And one of the things that Jesus asked him is, what is your name? So I was saying to you guys, I taught this in the spiritual roots class that I did, uh, which I am going to do again, probably late July, uh, just because uh, greetings to you. Been doing homework. Okay. Amen. Uh, Methel M. Welcome. And so uh, I, I wanted to just kind of give you a couple really quick. Uh, I was going to actually do this later. I may still have time. I don't know. Um, a website. I think it's your website. It may be someone else's. But it's, uh, um, and I can't even think of the name of it now. But someone someone has a website. And I thought for some reason it was you. Uh, maybe I was thinking of you when I looked at this website. But um, text me. I'll tell you about it. <laughs> Send me a text at 404 And I'll tell you because I really thought it was you. And so uh, the person sent me uh, this thing. Uh, hey, Adrian sent me a thing on um, one of the platforms. I want to say Instagram maybe. But anyway, uh, it was a website. And I was like, okay, I'll have to go check it out. So I thought it was you. Um Grace and peace, Adrian. Welcome. So uh, I want to talk about two things really quickly. So let me pray. Let's pray. And then we'll get into this divine nature. 30. Welcome. Good to have you. Um, and we're gonna, I want to give you some symptoms and kind of show you how these things kind of come together so you can really identify them. Uh, uh, because I believe the more you, uh, she said, I'm back. The more you uh, recognize these things and what they do and how they operate, the more you know how to attack them. One of the worst things about fighting is fighting blind. Like you don't know what you're fighting against. You don't know what the problem is. One of the greatest loves I have for God is that he is a God who brings solutions. But he also reveals the problem when you don't know what you're fighting against. That's a major frustration. That's a major, major frustration It's major when you don't know what you're fighting against. So um, if I have time to come back, I will. If not, then we'll catch it up because I am going to be coming back on and talking some more about this fight back because it's very good to know what you're fighting. Any real fighter knows it's always good to know your opponent. Amen. Their weaknesses as well as their strengths. Hallelujah. Eat the word. Hey, welcome. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, we bless you, we honor you, we praise you, we magnify you, we lift you up, we give you all the glory. Thank you, Father, for what you're going to do on this scope. Father, everyone who needs to be here, may they get the notification, may they get an uh, invite to be here so that they can hear what you are saying to the church by your spirit, using me as your instrument. And we thank you in advance that you are in the midst because where two or three are gathered, you are there Thank you, Father, for your presence on this scope. Have your way. Move. Speak. 
prophesy, pray, whatever you want to do, deliver. You have free course on this scope to do it. We submit ourselves humbly to you in advance. And we thank you in advance and we praise and exalt you for what you're going to do. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Hey, Miss Carol, welcome. So, I wanted to talk about two really quickly. One is the spirit of heaviness. One is the spirit of heaviness. And the other one is the spirit of fear. I want to show you. And just, and what I want to do. My goal here in encouraging us. Is to kind of get us blessings to you. Get us to identify how these things come together. Work together. And we sometimes are not aware that this is what we're fighting against. I'll say it again. One of the greatest things about God is that he is a solution. Uh, God of solutions. He can solve any issue no matter what it is. But it's also very wonderful when he tells us this is the devil that you're up against and so you can go straight in attack it root it out overthrow it destroy it you know exactly where to hit the target i've always said this if i was going if i went into the military I would have been a sharp I would have been a sharp shooter. Whatever they employed to do, they would have been calling me because I would have been a target master. I would have that's me. I want to hit the target. I don't want to go around it. I don't want to think about it. I want to hit the target. I want that target destroyed. When it's when I know what it is, I go for the target. And that's how it is in spiritual warfare for me. I don't I hate the gas and like you know, I'm going here and going there and it's maybe the I let God show me what it is because when he shows it to me, me, I'm going for it. That's the target I'm going to continue to hit. And I even asking God, what do you do to, to, of course, prayer is always number one for me. Fasting, of course, with prayer, of course, praise and worship, praise, thanksgiving, praise and worship with prayer and fasting. Amen. So all of those uh, kind of copulated uh, working together always are great, great weapons. Of course, you have the word. You have so many weapons that are in the Bible, in scripture that we probably have not known or looked at, but they are actual weapons that God has given to us. So one of the things that I wanted to mention to you is the spirit of heaviness. Now, uh, Isaiah 61 and 3 says to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion to give unto them beautiful ashes, the oil of joy for mourn, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. So here we can see in the scripture that God never wanted us to be heavy. It was not his intent or purpose for us to be heavy. It wasn't for him uh, for us to walk around sad, heavy, you know, uh, struggling. No. Clearly, that was not the idea of God, according to the scripture. So I'm going to give you some of the symptoms that it, that are here. Uh, looking at the symptoms, we're talking about this particular spirit of heaviness. One of them is, uh, of course, excessive mourning. Uh, sometimes uh, when a person is passed on, uh, you know, late whoever individuals that we loved and cared about some people uh there is a there's a time appointed to grieve even according to the bible and then after that it's excessive and the enemy can literally hold a person in a place and cause them to grieve excessively sometimes it's not a person who actually uh, passed on or expired but it's a relationship sometimes people are still grieving over relationships they're still having issues over relationships still mourning over relationships the thing is gone is over and they're still mourning over that so there there is something there that is wrong when it's excessive another uh, uh another one which is my absolute uh, uh one that i cannot this one whenever i hear it i see it it just I can't stand it. And that is hopelessness. Hopelessness is one of the major uh, helpers uh, or cohorts of the spirit of heaviness. Uh, hopelessness. Christina, thank you for coming back. Uh, is it kicking you guys off? Hey, Valina, God is faithful to me. Is it kicking you guys off or is it? Hopefully it's not on this end. Uh, so hopelessness, uh, loneliness, disappointment. Hey, twin one insomnia, inner hurt, bruises, spirits of heaviness. Hi, it's so good to see you, Valina. That was on your end. Okay. Hi, twin one. It's good to see you. So these things, these are symptoms of the spirit of heaviness. Now, what's interesting is that uh, the more the enemy can move a person, hello, love, into these areas and hold them there, the more that there's going to be others of these things that, that come on uh, or that are added to. So let's say for uh, 
heaviness, you have hopelessness, you have loneliness, you have, uh, again, uh, mourning, excessive mourning. Depression is another one. Depression, a lot of people deal with the spirit of depression on a regular basis. What they don't know is, or what they're unaware of is, what is driving the depression. Depression can stem from foundational issues. Let me explain that real quick. Foundational issue with depression, it could be some mental health issues coming from the family line, the the bloodline. There's some there's some generational stuff there in the bloodline. So depression is a part of Junior 170. Welcome. Depression is a is where that's coming from. It attacks different generations or different ones in different ways, but it's coming through the bloodline. So that can be one. The other one could be that the person picked it up from a soul tie to someone, a connection. It could be a friend, not just sexually only, but they picked it up from somewhere. They got this spirit of depression because they connected spiritually with someone and that, that someone had that spirit of depression and it got passed on or transferred over. So now, now, and then the other thing is the person could have, uh, a depression could have come in through an event in the person's life. Three ways. One could be through a soul tie. One could be generational. Uh, two could be generational. Another way or another one way it could come in is it could come in. Yeah. Wow. It could come in. Because of an event, something happened, hey, Stacey, 2018, something happened in the person's life. And in that, they, uh, Norris, hey, call by grace, how are you? It's been a minute. Good to see you. Um, that that uh, spirit, something happened, and the spirit of depression was introduced. Or it was, that's what they, when they were open, maybe sad, crying about something, down about some blessings. It's so good to see you, uh, that, that spirit came in. So it can come three ways. So there are three different ways that a thing can enter into a person's life. Okay? T. Sam's 2018, thanks for coming back in. And so when we're looking at that, now all of these, hello, blessings to you. All of these work with a spirit of fear. These are all all got working with the spirit of fear. Fear is here. Fear is here. In this, it is a spirit of fear as well. Amen. Good to see you. Thank you. It's a spirit of fear as well as as well as a, a spirit of rejection working there as well. So these things are all working. So when you're looking at What's his name? Which is what I tagged this scope. Thank you, love. When I said, what's his name? This is what I was saying. What's his name? It. What's the name of the thing? Uh, Banochero. Welcome on Periscope first day. What's his name? What is the name of the thing that's troubling you? That's bothering you? That's giving you issues? That's giving you problems? That's causing you to have all of these? Hey, Master Money, that's calling you to have all of this grief. There is something there. British Beauty, hello, welcome. Thanks for coming in. I, I You know, I almost waited because I said this is probably around the time people are eating, you know, because it's starting to cool off. It's the latter part of the day, and uh, at least on the East Coast anyway. And so I know that um, Master Money, I saw you were grilling. I saw your scope and I was like, I need to go watch that. <laughs> I need to watch that scope and out. Happy for to you. And I need to text her and say, you did not tell me we were cooking out today. You didn't tell me. <laughs> so it, I know it was. <laughs> you and Regina be throwing down on the Lolo over there. <laughs> I'm coming when y'all get the new house. I'm I'm going to come so that I can just enjoy the cooking. Because you and Regina be cooking for real. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for real, for real. Y'all be cooking. K. Wazil, welcome. Okay, I am definitely coming. I, I'm telling you. So, um, it is very important for us. Monstrous for P.E. Okay. Um, it's very important for us to be able to identify what we're fighting against because when we can identify what we're fighting against, you can believe this. Anytime you know what you're fighting, you're going to have more more of a courage to fight. Let me tell you why. Hey, Miss Magic, let me tell you why. Whenever you have courage to fight, just like David with Goliath, he saw what he was fighting. He knew he heard Goliath. He saw his strength. Can I break that down? And I probably will come back and do another one because uh, 
of time for uh, the sake of time for me now. And because of you, I know you guys may be eating dinner or whatever. But David saw, hey, seasons change. Welcome, Powerhouse 1122. I like it. That's nice. I like that tag, Powerhouse 1122. Welcome. Thanks for coming in. David saw Goliath's strength. I want you to catch this, and, and I'll elaborate more on this when I come back in later today or, or earlier tonight. Thank you so much, seasons change. Thank you. David saw Goliath's strength. He was tall. He had all this armor. He saw his strength, but he heard his weakness. Now, let me tell you why I say that. Now, hello, hello. I say that because even though he was tall in armor, everybody was looking at the outside, but nobody was hearing for the inside. Prophetic win forever. You're welcome, love. Nobody was listening. David saw his, David with everybody else saw his strength, but David heard Goliath's weakness. Let me tell you why I say that. David heard Goliath cursing them by his God. David knowing who, he, who God really is, the true and the living God, all powerful God, blessings to you. Um, began to, he said, okay, wait a minute. If for no other reason, I want you to hear this because this is going to help you. If for no other reason God would take him down, it was because he cursed them by his God. So he knew he don't, but he doesn't have a relationship, does not believe, of course, he was Philistine in the true and the living God. And now he's cursing by his God. So he heard the weakness. So when David heard Goliath, Cursing by his God, David knew if for nothing else, your God is not your God is weak and nothing to be compared to my God. So if for no other reason, my God will give me victory over you because of the simple fact that you are using your God. Your God is weak compared to my God. Your God is less than my God. Your God has no power compared to my God. And David said, so you come with your sword and your spear. He said, but I come in the name of the Lord. David did to him what he was doing to them. He said, you using your God to curse us, right? But I'm telling you, I'm about to use my God and the name of the Lord is a strong tower. So David knew about that. The righteous run into it and they are safe. That's in the Old Testament. Amen. So David recognized God as a protector. So David heard Goliath using the name of his God. David said, okay, I can take him down. I'm going to use the name of my God because Jehovah, hallelujah, Jehovah Gabor, the God of war. We talked about it last night. Uh, El Kayil. El Kayil is the God who wars for his people. So David said, you using your God's name? Let's see what happens when I use the name of my God. Come on, somebody. So listen, you have authority to fight back. You have ability to fight back. And how you do it is you use the name of God. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are saved. God's name, Jesus, the name of God, Jesus Christ, the highest name, the name that is above every name, according to Philippians, he was given that name that is above every name, that at that name, every knee must bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God. Amen. So, there is a power that we have in the name. So when we're looking at fighting back, when we're looking at what to use to fight, if you don't know what else to use, use the name of Jesus. Let me tell you something else about this. Oftentimes, because we've learned to use it as, as a filler, something about that name. Amen, Master Money. We learn to use Jesus' name so people would say, you know, for any reason, oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus, 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 and we're just saying it. But what you don't know is, is that when we say the name of Jesus, everything stops and stands at attention because now they're waiting for the next instruction after you say the name. Do you hear what I'm saying? So stop using the name of the Lord just as a filler. There is power in the name. Come on, somebody. Somebody. There is major power in the name of Jesus. So when you say in the name of Jesus or you say Jesus, be ready to give what you want after that. Most oftentimes people do this because we haven't been taught that you don't use that name happenstancely. You don't use that name light. When you're in a fight in the name of Jesus, I take authority over you. I bind you so the spirit of heaviness will pay attention when you say in the name of Jesus, you speak. 
spirit of heaviness. I take authority over you. I bind you in the name of Jesus. I cast you out of my life. Get out of my destiny. Get out of my everything. Get out in the name of Jesus. You, I'm telling you, if you call, you need something. That's right, uh, Norris. Hi, Esther. Welcome. So you want to make sure that when you're saying the name, that you have something that you're putting behind it. In the name of Jesus, I take authority. In the name of Jesus, I issue a divine arrest. In the name of Jesus, I command this embargo to lift. In the name of Jesus, I break the power of that witchcraft. In the name of Jesus, I command every dead bone in my in my life, in my destiny, in my money, in my finances, in my relationships to be resurrected. Amen. Come back to life. Receive life in the name of Jesus. You've got to learn to use the weapons of God so that you can have success. So when there's a heaviness, all you get need to do is say, in the name of Jesus. I told you this guy, this testimony. I told this to you guys before. I'll share it again. One day I was coming from work. And I'm telling you, I, my mind, it was bombarded with negative stuff. The enemy was telling me, you're nobody, you're nothing. People don't listen to you. Nobody cares about you. Your life is not important to anybody. Nobody cares if, that you even exist. I mean, you're just nothing. You're nobody. Nobody really believes in you. You know, God is not really going to use you. He doesn't really need you anyway. I mean, after all, what can you, it was that kind of stuff. I got in. No one was there. None of the children were there because all of my children lived with me then because they was, uh, uh, I think two of them were still in school. And so um, I got in. I took off my shoes. And I mean, I was to the point of tears because this thing was weighing on me that heavy. And I started toward my bathroom door. And I this, this song dropped in my spirit. I started singing. Um... And when I started to sing, it wasn't even 10 seconds. Boom. It lifted. I literally felt like a blanket just come off me like that. And I was like, wow. And I, I really had not, not paid attention to it as much as I did that day. So I started singing um, this song. Uh, I think it's Martha Man Man Manuzzi. Uh, Holy Spirit, fill this room. Shekinah glory sweet. When I got right there, that thing lifted. I mean, it was like, it was like the presence of that thing just left. And so I was like, oh, okay. So that's really like not me. Because, you know, the enemy likes to paint a picture like it's just you. It's not you. It's a spirit that you're that's working against your mind, attacking your mind so that you don't think the way you ought to think. Philippians. Let me look. Let me pull that scripture up. In fact, let me go. I'm going to put it up on the laptop because I want to I want to uh, I want to show you in a different. Uh, I want us to see it in a different uh, version. I want to see it in the Amplified. This particular scripture in Philippians chapter 4. We know it. You know it. We've heard it before. Philippians chapter 4. And I'm going to go and because uh, I want to get in in different translations. And I want you to hear this. Philippians 4. This thing blessed my soul. And I'm telling you, when I realized then that what I was fighting against was not me. It wasn't me. Because the enemy likes to paint a picture and make you believe that it's all just you. And so you start, want, you, you know, you're going into this depression. You're going into this low feeling. You're going into, you know, all of these different feelings that are not God, that are not intended for you. So let me pull it up. Philippians 4 and 19. This is the amplified of that. And it says this. It says um, I'm in the wrong. Hold on one second. I'm in the wrong um, wrong uh, verse. Philippians 4 and 8. Finally, believers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable and worthy of respect. Hey, Shekinah, blessings. Whatever is right and confirmed by God's word. You hear that? Blessings to you. Whatever is right and confirmed by God's word, whatever is pure and wholesome, whatever is lovely and brings peace, whatever is admirable and of good repute. If there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, 
think continually on these things. Center your mind on them and implant them in your heart. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So somewhere in the heart, this thing has infiltrated. This is how the enemy does. He doesn't just work in your mind. He'll work in the heart of a person so that they begin to think wrong from the heart. And then the heart now becomes an, a breeder of hopelessness, a breeder of sadness, a breeder of hurt. And they keep re, uh, refurbishing and recycling and going through this same thing over and over in the mind. So that day... I realized that how much so, and this has been some years ago, I realized how much so that the enemy would attack a person's mind. Now, what about people who've never recognized, have no idea that this is what's happening, don't know what's going on, and they're being attacked. So this spirit of fear is there, and the spirit of heaviness is there, and they're now working together to pull this person down from the place of destiny, to pull them down from their place of calling, pull them down from the place of blessing, pull them down from the place of, of, of uh, promise for the, for, uh, from the Lord. So he says, finally, believe. Believers, whatever is true. Okay, now just that one statement. Hang there and think about 2 Corinthians 10, 4, 5, and 6, where Paul says, The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty in God to the pulling down for the pulling down of strongholds for the uh and you say I'm supposed to be here today, amen, for pulling down strongholds and then coming against every high thing that has exalted itself against the true knowledge of God. So the truth about who God is and the truth about who you are is where he fights. So if you don't believe God loves you, now true, God does love you. Romans said so, 5 and 5. John 3.16, amen. Joe Blow, welcome. John 3.16, for God so loved the world. So the truth is that God loves us, right? But there's an argument, there's an enemy that's telling you he doesn't love you. Wait a minute. What do you believe? So you believe the liar, then you start feeling the poison that comes from the lie. Whenever the devil releases an, a lie, it comes like an arrow or spear and it releases poison that spreads. It's a poison. Lies are poisonous. Okay, anytime we believe the liar, it releases a poison. Poison in the heart, poison in thinking, poison in how we see things, poison on our outlook. It releases a poison. So we have to be very mindful that when we hear things, before you process it and take it, take no thought. Before you process it, think about it. Does it take me toward truth? about who God is? Does it take me toward truth about who I am? Does it make me feel, uh, 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 is it worthy? Does it bring worth and value? Does it come, is it confirmed by the word of God? Main question to ask yourself when these thoughts come, because a lot of times heaviness starts in the thoughts. You start with this one question. Does it confirm, is it confirmed in the word of God? Is it confirmed in the word of God? If it's confirmed in the word, you're good. Keep it. If it's no confirmation of the word of God in that thing, throw it out. Kick it. Reject it. Say, I don't receive that. I circumcise that thought from my thoughts in the name of Jesus. I cut it out. I command it to go in the name of Jesus. So you use the name of Jesus and you reject the thought. Do you see how that's working? So you are using things. The enemy uses situations, generational curses, amen, prophetess, blessings, and even uh, uh, events, soul ties to get your mind to uh, cooperate with his plan. And anytime you take it in, that's where I was. I, somewhere I took in the lie and it released the poison. Now my mind and my heart are under serious attack because I took it in. And all the way home, and I had about a 35 minute ride home, all the way home, save 10 minutes, I was, that's that thing. When it started, it bombarded my mind. I mean, it was everything you can imagine. How, it was from weight. It was how you look. It was so many things. I never realized how serious those attacks had been on my mind. And then when I got in and I started, and I didn't even know to sing. I didn't even ask God. I didn't even know like to pray against it. I just started singing. And when I started singing, by the time I got to, uh, I was like, Holy Spirit, fill this room. 
Shekinah glory. When I got there, lifted. It was like, it, it literally like something just went whoosh, like that. And I was like, wow, that thing. And that thing, and for, I don't know if I picked it up from work, from someone I encountered. I don't know. But somewhere I had gotten it. It could have been, a, it could work from generation, from your foundation, your roots. Could have something, depression may be a running thing in the bloodline. Praise is a weapon. Yes, yeah, singing and worshiping and praising God. Absolutely. Paul and Silas, Acts 16, 25. At midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises. So singing praises to God, not just singing, singing praises. I have to, I have to emphasize that because some of the stuff that is singing is not praise. It's not worship to God. It's a song, but it's not praise and worship to God. So not just singing, but pray, singing praise to God. Acts specifically mentions that they prayed and sang praises to God. So whenever you're looking and you're, you're going through any of this, and I'm saying that especially because we start looking at holidays, you know, that's a major time where a lot of people go through a lot of major uh, heaviness during holidays. They're by themselves. They're lonely. You know, they don't have friends or they don't have family or there's some kind of issue going on. People ain't talking to each other. Folk, you know, mean to each other. Yeah, same praise unto God. Right. And and stuff like that. And it's not just at Christmas and, and Thanksgiving. And though. It's, it's heavier then, yes, because those days are extended. That's an extended holiday period. But holidays are major for people dealing with heaviness because, it, again, sometimes they're reminiscing or remembering someone who's, you know, uh, expired. Or sometimes they're just, you know, they, they you know, family has uh, is not what it was. Maybe the year before it was a happy time and this time it's not. So it's so many things that the enemy can open the door to people and they have this heaviness, this weariness. But I want to let you know that there is a way of escape. His name is Jesus. The name that is above every name. You have the weapon. I told you, um, yeah, not I, I, yeah, I, I get it, Adrian. I'm not talking about the celebration of the holiday. I'm saying that when people holidays, whether they're pagan or not, I agree. Um, and on some of them, they are uh, those holidays. But holidays are when people get together. I drove by so many places when I was coming back in just now. So many places full of cars in the park, in their yards, and on the side because people came together for the fourth. They cake. Uh, Coach Sophie, welcome. They came together to cook together, at family time, spend time together. And everybody doesn't have that. So some people are going through heaviness because they don't have that. They don't have people to spend time with. They don't have family like that or whatever. They don't have friends. Maybe there's been a bad breakup, whatever. They could be remembering last year somebody was there who's not there. Last year they were in a relationship. They're not in a relationship. So those are the things. Amen. That's what I'm saying. And that that introduces a spirit of heaviness and I want you to be conscious of these attacks because we're in the second half of the year and the enemy is not going to wait or waste time right you can relate waste time attacking people with this kind of stuff especially when we don't know especially when we don't know and I'm saying I, I had no idea. No more. I did not understand. And then when that thing lifted, I was like, whoa, that was serious. I never had that happen. But I did not understand what it was. And so for it to lift, let me know that it was something then that I could fight against. I did understand that if it lifted like that, I can fight it. I can fight it. And so I want you to be aware that you have every ability to fight these things, to, to you know, uh, fight it off, not to be caught up. Don't be stressed. Don't be strained. Know that God is for you and that he has given you all that you need to fight. You don't have to stay in heaviness. Un you don't have to stay under attack of the enemy. So I want to pray really quickly before I go. I think I'll probably need to come back and have more time to elaborate on this stuff. So Father, in the name of 
Jesus. I pray for your people, those watching and the replay viewers. I thank you, Lord God, that anyone that's suffering, anyone that's under attack of any kind of heaviness, in the name of Jesus Christ, we take authority over heaviness. We bind it. We blind it. We gag it. In the name of Jesus, we tie it down. We loose them now from that spirit of heaviness in their mind, in their emotions, in their will, in their spirit, in their body, wherever it's attacking the body, in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we release healing right now in the name of Jesus. We release the joy of the Lord that causes strength to come in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you that that garment of heaviness is stripped off and burned by fire to ashes never to be put together again in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And we release the garment of praise according to Isaiah 61 and 3 in the name of Jesus. May their attire change from the garment of heaviness to the garment of praise in Jesus name. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Well, I do have to go. I love you. Thank you guys for coming in, hearting it up. Thank you for spending time with me. I will try to come back if it's not too late tonight. If so, I'll pick it up some more tomorrow. We'll talk some more about this because this is the second half of the year. And it's very important that we understand what we're fighting against so that we can, in the name of Jesus, end our year well and strong and good. Amen. Good. Uh, hello. Good evening, Walking Grace. And enjoy in Jesus name. That is the will of God concerning us. Thank you love. Happy belated birthday to you too. That is the will of God concerning us. And I decree and declare in the name of Jesus. That you will know what you're fighting. And, and you will have complete strategy from the most high God. To overtake that thing. And to testify in victory in Jesus name. Hallelujah. Well bless you. I love you. You can go to the website. If you would like to sow. Leave me an email www.prophetmonica.com I will continue to talk about this as long as God is giving me these downloads I'm going to share with you because I know that there's a strategy for victory for you in Jesus name God bless you all I love you talk soon